le monde, c'est nous. Russia's re-engagement with the African continent continues to make a footprint across the globe. The launch of the Africa-Russia summit in the year 2019 is largely viewed to have given a strong impetus and strengthened the ties between the former Soviet Union and the African continent in areas like culture, economy, politics, and security, among others. The Russian African Club is one of those initiatives aimed at ensuring a friendly and more win-win relationship with uh, countries across Africa. The Russian African Club is an embodiment of uh, opinion leaders, diplomats, business magnate, politicians, public figures, among others, who share a vision of cooperation and development between Russia and the African continent. The club activities are aimed at uh, further developing uh, uh, friendly relations between Africa and uh, the Russia on the eve of the uh, second, uh, uh, as the, the continent or uh, the two countries pre uh, prepare uh, to host the second uh, uh, Russia-Africa summit, uh, which is built uh, for the uh, tw uh, July 2023 20, uh, year. Uh, Summit uh, seeks to bring further cooperation, especially economic cooperation, between uh, Russia and uh, countries across Africa. But today we are looking at uh, this initiative of the uh, Russian African Club and what uh, it advocates as uh, we are uh, about to enter the new year. And of course, our focus this day is on the Russian African Club, how it advocates new perspectives. Then a problematic will be here. opportunities does the Russia African Club open up for people of Russia and especially of Africa. What uh, opportunities does the Russian Africa Club uh, open uh, for the people of Russia and, of course, those are uh, in uh, Africa? Hello to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us this day. Uh, it is uh, uh, the first edition of the program Views on the Continent uh, for this week uh, on your Pan-African uh, television. Today we are looking at uh, the uh, uh, African, uh, the Russian African uh, Club, uh, of course, a great initiative uh, that was launched uh, this year, precisely in June 2022, 20, uh, 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 an initiative that brings together politicians, that brings together diplomats, African diplomat, business magnates, and of course, on all the opinion leaders and even uh, public figures to discuss for the uh, constructive uh, uh, cooperation between uh, the uh, Soviet uh, Union, the former Soviet Union, and the African continent. And today we're looking at how uh, the Russian African Club can bring a new uh, dispensation uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, challenges uh, faced by the global world uh, today, uh, given uh, the, the, the communication war that I will put it uh, uh, this way, of, of course, the war of uh, uh, propaganda. How will this club uh, identify or dissociate itself uh, from uh, the uh, uh, crisis uh, around the world to meet the set objectives? How will it indulge uh, young people, especially across Africa, like we, we have uh, highlighted already in the preamble? Uh, the Russian African Club is looking at how uh, they can revive uh, the young Africans and also help them uh, uh, to contribute quarter to the uh, development of the African uh, continent. How is this uh, going to be met? Uh, this and more we are going to be discussing in the course of the program. And uh, of course, uh, with delight, uh, I will introduce to you uh, Yulia Burke, who is joining us uh, this day uh, to give an uh, in depth analysis uh, on our topic for today, uh, looking at the Russia Africa ties and bringing to the fore the Russia African uh, club that is already ready uh, to bring new perspectives or new impetus into the cooperation between Russia and Africa, especially as uh, the 2023 will host the second Africa-Russia summit. She's a political analyst. Hello to you, uh, dear Yulia. A pleasure having you this day on the Pan-African television. Hello, uh, happy to be here today. Thank you for the invitation. It's 
uh, uh, utmost, uh, uh, of utmost importance that uh, you are here today uh, to give uh, a clearer view of the Africa uh, Russia ties and, of course, bringing up the uh, uh, vision of the Russian Africa Club. Uh, just to remind us uh, that uh, uh, Maurice uh, Okolia will be joining us in the course of the, the program eh, to say that he is uh, the fellow at the Institute of uh, Institute of African Studies Academy of Sciences in uh, Russia. And uh, let's dive uh, straight away, uh, Russia, uh, Yulia. Uh, before actually looking at what the, the new perspectives are all about, let's understand the Russian Africa Club and how it came about the, its existence in 2022. Yes, um, thank you. So I would like to start giving a little bit of context in terms of the current state of affairs in, in terms of the uh, relations between uh, the African continent and African countries and Russia. So um, it is necessary to say uh, from the start that, uh, let's say from the beginning of the 90s and up until recently, up until maybe five years ago, those relations were not really systematic and not really complex because in the previous period of time, let's say from the 1950s to 1970s or late 70s and the beginning of 80s, there has been quite a lot of educational exchange, quite a lot of cultural exchange between the African countries and Russia, quite a lot of exchange in terms of uh, technologies and joint projects uh, in, in the areas of energy, of course, in the military area, a lot of assistance provided by the Soviet Union at that time to the um, wars for independence and uh, in the wars um, against the uh, colonial system. But starting from the 90s, those, a lot of those ties were, you know, I would say dropped uh, for a while. And um, it was only in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, when a new concept of uh, external uh, policy of Russia to um, Africa was adopted, right? So for almost, uh, well, around 25 years, the state of affairs in terms of the relationship was not systematic, yet there was still quite a lot of interest, uh, uh, mutual interest from um, coming from African countries, especially the ones with historically closer uh, ties with Russia and closer economic relations, and from Russia and Russian um, businesses, uh, Russian, you know, just generally people willing to learn more, to uh, foster those cultural ties and you know at the human being level you know russians moving to africa some settling there so it's uh, it's something you can uh, you can see in in many african countries even in quite uh, remote um, and hard to reach areas so um during that period of time let's say from the beginning of 90s or maybe even mid 80s up until uh, 2018 there was no clear state policy defined in any kind of a document that would set certain framework and provide opportunities to support economic ties, cultural ties, and educational ties. So right now we see a, a sort of a, a renaissance of those uh, relations, and the current global situation is only providing additional motivation to work on those um, economic, cultural, educational, technological, and other kinds of uh, joint projects. So the, the club that was launched, the Russian African club that was launched in June this year is one of those, one of those steps in order to encourage uh, closer cooperation. And here, when we talk about this uh, cooperation, we should mention that it holds a lot of opportunities for both sides, especially now that Africa is going through a new wave of, uh, um, um, let's say, anti-colonial uh, moods, right? Now that more people are realizing that they are still dependent on uh, the um, United States, on the European countries, and not, let's say, uh, free and sovereign enough in, in making uh, decisions at the global arena in economic relations, in terms of their trade relations. And of course, um, it is clear that only sovereignty can ensure a um, desirable 
um, you know, place at the international arena that African countries should should have the right to take as being one of the richest, one of the youngest, and one of the uh, strongest uh, continent, right? So um, the, the club that was founded and that recently had another session just on December 19 is one of those steps. Uh, it's uh, one of the build-ups to uh, the new Russia-Africa forum that will be taking place uh, uh, next year in um, in the summer, and uh, I think it's one of the most important steps because such uh, exchanges, uh, cultural exchanges, exchanges at the level of values, exchanges at the level of uh, uh, increasing mutual understanding through music, through discussions, through direct uh, open talks, uh, it builds very strong uh, foundation for further relationships. So I'm, I'm very much sure that the second Russia-Africa summit uh, will be much uh, uh, bigger and much bigger in terms of uh, economic agreements volume, much bigger in terms of, uh, you know, already established uh, cooperation projects and much bigger in terms of opportunities than the uh, previous one. There is hope of, but the second Russia uh, Forum of Summit uh, opens greater opportunities, especially uh, for the uh, uh, country uh, countries across Africa. While talking earlier on, you said uh, the Russian African Club, uh, Yulia, uh, presents a, a myriad of opportunity uh, opportunities for both uh, nations, and you talk about the cultural exchanges. Uh, you also highlighted the renaissance or the reawakening of the African consciousness. And of course, this is very important. Now, we are looking at uh, the, the aspect of uh, uh, how, uh, because at the end is to see a win-win uh, relationship, to see how will this materialize, especially be practical in the sphere of development, be it in cultural development in Africa, to wipe out uh, the uh, uh, philosophy of uh, uh, inferiority, like one culture being inferior uh, to the other? Well, um, um, this, um, uh, let's say, uh, this, this kind of perception uh, just shows the um, um, quite messed up state of affairs we are at right now. And uh, in terms of this uh, cultural inferiority, unfortunately, the majority of the world population is uh, living under this impression for the past, not just decades, but maybe even centuries, right? Because when we have one, um, let's say, dominant uh, paradigm, which is represented by the West that has basically created and promoted all of the uh, international institutions, there is not much room for maneuver, right? And when um, one type of political system or regime is being proclaimed to be universal, when one type of culture and one type of an approach is, uh, um, is well, arrogant enough to be dictating to the whole world, regardless of, you know, cultural and political traditions, um, it becomes quite ridiculous. But even in terms of governance, there have been many uh, beautiful uh, traditions and practical traditions in Africa when the elders would gather and discuss, um, you know, topical issues using their life experience. Um, a lot of, uh, in terms of political systems and political traditions, a lot of, um, you know, very interesting and peculiar um, um, approaches that we can see across the African continent. And when we look at the philosophy that, uh, you know, is uh, quite big on the um, African land, uh, probably with Ubuntu being one of the most uh, popular, let's say, or one of the most known concepts, we see how uh, this philosophical basis contributes to the development of uh, human beings and communities, which is extremely important nowadays when we see that, uh, you know, people are becoming more and more uh, um, atomized, they're distancing themselves from uh, each other, from their family members, and this really is becoming uh, quite catastrophic for the future of the humankind. So, of course, uh, the, the very key to mutually beneficial cooperation is uh, lies in respect, right? 
but respect, um, well, self-respect comes first. So step one is to look at oneself, uh, you know, in, in, clear, in a clear and honest way, and then to present oneself with, uh, with a significant amount of respect to the others. And only then um, cooperation might be possible. And unfortunately, this is not, uh, this is not the situation that we have been seeing um, in the world. So I think that um, in order to um, build uh, healthy relations at the um, international arena, which will be emanating into uh, beneficial economic projects, uh, into uh, cultural and educational and academic exchanges that would be contributing to development and contributing to using the best practices, the best technologies, the best uh, skills, but applied to a specific um, you know, location and, and uh, respecting the characteristics of that location, that would be um, a completely different world uh, we would hopefully <laughs> be living in, right? So um, yes, I think that is, uh, that is the, very, the very key. And um, it does take a lot to become a, uh, an independent actor at the international arena. But if that is not done, uh, there is not much of options to go forward. Uh, Mr. Uh, Maurice uh, Kalia, PhD, just uh, joined us uh, to uh, emphasize uh, that he's a fellow at the Institute of the World Economy and International Relations, Academy of Sciences, Russia and of course, fellow Institute of African Studies, Academy of Sciences, Russia. Hello to you, sir, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Pan-African Television. Please, okay. Yeah, welcome to the program, it is Views on the Continent, Mr. Kali. Can you please activate your mic so we can hear you? Uh, while Hello. hoping to, to fix that, uh, we continue with you, uh, uh, Yulia. We, we, we are looking at the... Okay, it's good with Mr. Ikoli. Hello to you, sir, yeah. and thanks for joining us this day. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, all our viewers. It's always a pleasure for us having you to share your viewpoints today. We are looking at the, this new initiative, the Russian uh, African Club, uh, uh, to say that you participated actually uh, in the December 19 event uh, that uh, discussed, especially uh, looking forward uh, to new perspectives and looking at how the club can uh, change the paradigm uh, regarding uh, the uh, unfoldment across uh, the global world and of course bringing Africa and Russia Africa uh, relation to another level that is more practical and more win-win so what have you to say about uh, this uh, Russian Africa club from the perspective of an African thank you for the question let me start by, uh, by saying that Africa Soviet Union had the relations, and those relations covered diplomatic, uh, political, cultural, and, um, and all sphere of, of life. After the collapse of Soviet Union, uh, Russian influence in Africa diminished. It became, became so marginal. Uh, today, we can see that uh, Russia has made a comprehensive Russia has made it a top priority to have a comprehensive partnership with Africa. And in line of that, African club was formed in Moscow. And the essence of that African club is to give impetus to the relationship uh, between Russia and Africa. Russia has made it a, a top priority. And the, the African club is going to, in line of that, promote the, the relationship scientific, economic, trade, and further, further interaction between Africans and uh, Russia. Hello? Yes, sir. I'm with you. And further, inter yeah, yeah, and further, and further interaction between the, 
Africa, and that's what we have done. It's a uh, it's open to all members, all the diplomats, official diplomats, Russian diplomats, uh, businessmen, entrepreneurs, scientists, cultural group, educational group. It's open to a wide range of uh, people. The essence is to bring African community and the Russian community together. And, and I think one of the first um, first projects the club is going to carry is to form an association of uh, African rectors and uh, Russian rectors. That will be included in the program that will be uh, that will be taking place in the summit in Saint Petersburg in 2023. As you know, the first the first summit took place in took place in Sochi in 2019, and that summit was a very good success. In that summit, about 92 contract was signed, and uh, the, the, to the tune of 1.1.2 trillion rubles. Following that, there will be another second summit, and that second summit is in in, is in top preparation. So, African Russian African Club is to give impetus to all this uh, 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 pol Russian uh, policy Russian. Russian foreign, pol foreign policy towards Africa. Thank you. Sir, let let me stay with you. Uh, you have highlighted uh, so many aspects, uh, which of course, if uh, uh, given importance, is going to uh, further strengthen the existing relationship between uh, Russia and the African continent. And when we look at the Russian African club, we see uh, that it has actually underlined the aspect of, of education, which I want us to dwell, us, uh, to dwell on. In your perspective, uh, uh, what, what do you think or how do you think the summit can, can be a catalyst, uh, I beg your pardon, the, 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 the club can be a catalyst to, to face lever the educational sector of uh, the uh, African continent and we see uh, you talk about exchanges, cultural exchanges, uh, and of course the, the, the field of education. And we know that presently in Africa, there are some pundits who feel like Africans, uh, Africa's stagnation is largely due to the educational system that do not actually uh, uh, prepare, especially young and vibrant Africans, uh, to be more productive or practical when it comes to uh, solving the problems uh, faced by the African continent. So what opportunity uh, do you think uh, the Russian African club uh, presents for the education sector uh, in Africa? Thank you for the question. You know, um, Russian has been magnanimity with the personal opportunity for Africa. Since Soviet Union, so many Africans have been trained in Russia, and the trend continues. After the demise of Soviet Union, Russia continues in that trend. Every year, thousands of scholarships are given to Africans to study in Russia in different fields, um, medicine, um, all field. There is no limitation. So that has, has helped Africa tremendously. In terms of uh, what the club can do to promote that uh, trend, this club was formed on the based on the initiative of uh, Moscow State University. And Moscow State University is one of the best universities in Russia. So being that they are the head of uh, push for this African, they are going to pay attention mainly on the educational part of it. If they are giving the, the, the Nigerians the African opportunity, I think they are going to increase it. Not only that, the move they are making to bring the, the, rect the African the rectors of African universities and a lot of Russian together, we increase the opportunity, not only in, in, in uh, educational opportunity, but uh, technological exchange, scientific research, and other important things that are needed by African countries. 
Miss Falkali. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, just to remind our viewers joining us that this is Views on the Continent on the Pan African Television Africa Media. We are looking at uh, the Russian African Club uh, and uh, the perspective of that they have uh, for the future as uh, the world prepares to enter a new year 2023. What prospect, what does uh, the year, uh, what opportunities does the Russian African Club present for both uh, Russians and Africans. Uh, let me come back to you, dear Yulia. Uh, this uh, club is surfacing at a time uh, of, uh, of, of great turbulence in the world. I always want us to dwell on, on it. And we, we, we see the, the, uh, the vision that is very clear and, uh, of course, which is largely uh, a political. So in your own perspective, uh, what do you think? The, the club can do to dissociate itself from uh, the uh, the world of propaganda or uh, the media world uh, uh, that is ongoing in the global world in order to meet the defined objective of uh, strengthening or ensuring a practical constructive uh, partnership or cooperation between uh, Russia and uh, uh, the African continent. Well, um, it's a very good question, and I think that um, in the first place, it is important uh, for um, you know every country in the world to have the ability to choose, right? So next year is the year of uh, South African presidency in the BRICS um, organization or BRICS uh, group of countries, and even within this group, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for. Uh, the countries of um, um, Africa in the BRICS plus format, because when you talk about BRICS uh, being Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, those, uh, you know, big countries, uh, huge economies, a lot of technological potential and everything, um, a lot of economic potential, there is a lot to discuss and there is a lot to work on, right? So being able to choose partners, uh, would it be would it be Russia? Would it be India? Would it be China? Would it be European uh, countries or the United States? Uh, gives an, an absolutely different um, negotiating position for um, any country having those options and having those choices, right? And those choices, uh, in my opinion, are supposed to be done on case by case basis when. Uh, people are able to choose the best out of what they have um, uh, offered, out of what they have on the table. So I think next year will be a year of great opportunities because of the uh, South African presidency in the BRICS, uh, because of the uh, upcoming Russia-Africa summit. Those are huge venues, and those venues would be uniting a lot of diplomats, a lot of businessmen, a lot of um, academics, uh, and you know, many different people. So in the build up to those events, um, a lot of things uh, will be happening and a lot of opportunities will be opening. And in terms of the global, um, you know, uh, context and in terms of the uh, global happenings, I think what's important to uh, mention is that uh, the current turbulence uh, is uh, at the same time playing a great role of uh, assisting us to set uh, priorities and to see what is important, what is not. And it is also able to catalyze some of the processes that otherwise would have taken many, many years. Very much important. It is uh, often said that uh, in any uh, situation, no matter uh, the, the unfortunate situation, you try to look at opportunities and, of course, uh, see uh, what you can pick from that. And you have underlined, uh, dear Yulia, that amidst the turbulence, it's time for the world to set priorities. Uh, we, we, we continue to look at uh, the the initiative, the Russian Africa uh, Club. Uh, let's see, what prospect does the club uh, have for young people in Africa? Because when we talk about seeing Africa develop, seeing Africa attain a level, we, 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 we literally mean uh, including the vibrant uh, and uh, uh, talented young people in Africa. Uh, does uh, the, uh, the, the, the 
the club uh, have uh, ideas like to, to, to indulge in skills development, especially among young people in Africa. And I think uh, skills development is what is going to drive uh, the economy or make uh, the economies of African countries uh, very buoyant. Uh, of course, youth is uh, the future, and uh, the uh, discussion that was taking place um, uh, on December 19 included quite a lot being said about opportunities for young people. And I think my colleague here, Mr. Akali, would be able to elaborate on it better, knowing the situation within the uh, diaspora and knowing how hard sometimes it is for African students to integrate, uh, also because of the language barrier. Russian is not the... Uh, uh, the um, the most simple language, right? And uh, sometimes that creates additional challenges. And I think, yes, uh, Mr. Okoli could elaborate on, on what uh, kind of opportunities uh, Russian education can provide and what kind of opportunities for young people are there in terms of um, jobs and uh, related issues. Uh, let me come back to you, Mr. Okali. We continue in the same light. Uh, we are looking at the place of the young people in uh, the Russian African uh, club, uh, which of course uh, is uh, looking towards or uh, working towards changing the paradigms. So uh, let's let's look at this uh, aspect of skills uh, development. You you bear with me that uh, the African continent uh, uh, lately has uh, uh, witnessed a series of uh, of uh, a crisis, uh, uh, we, we see uh, radicalization uh, that is uh, among young people and some people have uh, uh, explained or underlined that the fact that African youths are usually entrapped in whatever war or, or circumstances uh, across the continent is because of uh, their, uh, their, uh, the fact that they are not economically viable. And of course, due to uh, lack of uh, youth unemployment, uh, uh, job opportunities for young people, they find themselves uh, uh, being used by the third party uh, to instigate uh, violence. But now we see this of a uh, greater initiative, the Afri uh, Russian African Club. So where is the place of the young people or what prospect does this new initiative have for the young people to be able to solve some of the youth problems across Africa. Thank you so much for the question. Well, um, youth are the key for the future. As you know, African population is made up of mainly youth and getting them gainfully employed is very important. So information of this uh, African Russian club, the, the the employment opportunity for African youth was taken into consideration. And they can come through investment in Africa. The aim of the, one of the aims of, of the club is to drive investment. Because when there is investment and there is employment of opportunity, the youth will be gainfully employed. And when they gain employed, they will be very busy. So uh, in, in, in setting up the agenda of the Russia African Club. They look at all aspects of uh, the youth employment. First of all, as I said, the club is based on one of the finest universities in Russia, Moscow State University. First of all, most of the people that are going to bring through this uh, club to study in Russia, they are youths. And as, as they are educating them along the line, they are also looking at investment of opportunity. You know, they're also going to talk to Russian companies uh, because the opportunity to invest in Africa, as you know, today, there is a struggle for Africa. China is involved, America is involved, Europe is involved, and Russia is involved. I think uh, Africa remains the last frontier that, you know, to be developed. So with all these things and the aim of the club to bring in uh, so many students from um, Africa, train them in the key, key sector, and also followed by investment from Russia. Uh, like as I said, there is a first uh, summit that took place in Sochi. In that first summit, 92 contract was signed. And this contract were investment contract. It's an investment that is going to, I mean, uh, 
create employment of opportunity for youth in Africa. The one that is coming also this summer, uh, summer of 2023 also, is geared towards the investment. What Africa needs to keep the, the youth engaged is to develop the economy, is to get the investment, is to provide the enable, the enable, enable environment for investment to trickle in from abroad. And the, the Russian African club is encompassing all these uh, processes to make sure that uh, the impact is felt. And also, they are not trying to be different from the policy of uh, Russia, the foreign policy of Russia in, in comprehensive partnership with Africa. What they are doing is just to give it impetus. And uh, I think uh, they will concentrate in the area of development. They know the problem of Africa, and we tell them from time to time. So with much investment coming to Africa, I think uh, that will create, create a job opportunity for, for the youth in Africa. In the youth uh, economically vibrant, let me stay with you, Mr. Okali. You have uh, highlighted, of course, uh, great things, great opportunities uh, that uh, the uh, Russian uh, Africa Club present, and of course, the relationship between Russia and Africa present. You said uh, the club is giving impetus to this existing relationship, and we are looking at. You mentioned about uh, the the investment, uh, future investment uh, that are uh, uh, to be presented uh, 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 between the two countries. So maybe uh, between. Uh, Russia and the continent Africa but then let's look at this aspect yeah great opportunities are coming our stakeholders in Africa engaging these young people to be ready for future incision when this investment opportunities finally come are the youths aware or conversant of these great opportunities uh, that they can actually explore or to to uh, maybe uh, bring about self-development and of course uh, uh, contribute their own uh, quarter uh, to the uh, uh, upliftment or the development of the african continent are they uh, psychologically or mentally ready to welcome uh, this uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, the youth of Africa, you know, are very clever and also uh, intellectually savvy. I think uh, they will be very ready to grab a new opportunity that comes as a result of econo economic development. Uh, the youth themselves are very vibrant and they are very upward mobile. So in terms of economic development, especially investments coming from abroad, the youth will not uh, let the opportunity go. They will grab it, you know, because um, once opportunity comes like that, it's good to, I mean, create a favorable condition in which that opportunity will thrive. So the youth of Africa, which make us large percentage of the population, is key to economic development. Uh, for example, uh, let me tell you what the, the the club has done. They just opened a museum in Moscow for African uh, art. You know, the first time in the history of Russia, and this, that museum is based on um, museum of, of uh, African uh, and Oriental artifacts. It was opened, and uh, in attendance, we have so many uh, African, and there were so many youths especially students who are studying in various universities in Russia. They came, they were present, they were invited, you know. Uh, and that system of interaction gives the youth hope because when the youth interact, they see the opportunity. So in organizing the, 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 the museum, there were so many people that came, and mainly youths. They came, observed what was happening, and then they made, they made their impact. So it's very important uh, that um, youth are included in whatever we are doing because that's the future of tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, the youth uh, needs to be uh, involved uh, in the activities 
and and, uh, and uh, we uh, just to remind us uh, that uh, uh, you are on the Pan African Television Africa Media, and this is views on the continent, uh, uh, an informative and of course uh, interactive program uh, where we discuss uh, issues. Uh, uh, pertinent uh, to the African continent and of course uh, to the uh, uh, global world. Uh, today we are looking at uh, the ties between the Ro uh, Russia and uh, Africa and of course taking the perspective of uh, the uh, Russian uh, African uh, club that uh, in June 2022 uh, to give uh, more impetus to the already existing relationship between uh, Russia and uh, Africa. And of course, uh, this is coming in prelude to the uh, second Africa, Russia, Africa summit uh, that is built for July 2023 uh, in the city of uh, St. Petersburg in uh, Russia. And of course, let's continue talking uh, uh, this uh, cooperation. Coming back to you, dear Yulia. We are uh, highlighting uh, the, uh, the the economic forum or the second Russia Africa uh, summit uh, that is coming in uh, the year 2023. Sir, so, uh, how do you think uh, or what do you think uh, this club can do to further bring, especially uh, we we saw today in the preamble that uh, the the club is bringing together diplomats, uh, African diplomat, businessmen, uh, civil society society and uh, others of course for a common cause so how can the african business or the african uh, russian african club prepare uh, these uh, stakeholders to further take uh, advantage or to to uh, make good use of the uh, upcoming uh russia africa summit built for july 2023 Yulia. Well, um, of course, such gatherings uh, do contribute to uh, the overall uh, development of uh, relations, right? Because when people uh, have a chance to meet uh, in quite a uh, relaxed atmosphere and talk and know each other better, and then given the fact uh, the, the museum that uh, Mr. Okoli just mentioned was opened, it is possible to see and touch and feel uh, the very uh, foundations of um, the culture, right? So this is something that uh, you can uh, scan with all of your senses. And um, this is how you can deeper um, understand what you're talking about. Because um, at the moment, uh, um, Africa uh, remains, uh, you know, quite a, uh, um, a distant and not, let's say, easy to reach uh, destination for um, Russians, right? And the same can be said in terms of Russia for Africans, right? It's it's still something quite exotic, some, some country up north with uh, not a very nice climate and this kind of things, right? So there is really a lot to explore uh, in terms of not just, you know, culture and, and uh, getting to know uh, the people, but also in terms of business opportunities. And such discussions do uh, foster and facilitate uh, this kind of ties. And I can say even more that, uh, you know, even during the current uh, turb turbulent time, when some of the Russian businessmen went to um, Africa to explore opportunities, and, and there is quite a lot uh, happening in the IT uh, sector, right? They were, um, they were um, uh, encountering uh, uh, some very interesting business cases that they didn't know about, right? Because in Africa, let's say, in, especially uh, in, in the central uh, part and the southern part, uh, there are quite a lot of interesting solutions found for payment system when we look at uh, Zimbabwe, when we look at uh, South Africa, when we look at many other countries. Some have, uh, you know, quite uh, advanced uh, legislation in terms of cryptocurrencies, including Central African Republic that has adopted crypto as one of the uh, payments um, uh, at the uh, state level, right? So. This project is being developed, and this was also of a great interest for Russian entrepreneurs that went in to offer their own solutions for the crypto business in Central Africa. And this as well can be a very interesting um, opportunity because, you know, given the fact that the uh, CFA uh, still exists as a currency and is uh, regulated from the outside, there is a lot to talk about in terms of alternative financial solutions. 
And the same thing is valid for some of the Russian technologies that could be um, uh, applied in Africa or that could be developing in a joint way in order to uh, fit uh, the needs of, uh, you know, people from specific countries in the best way possible. And when we talk about some of the uh, uh, financial uh, or payment solutions, some of the solutions for small businesses and services like hotels and restaurants and small retailers and stores and shops. Uh, there is quite a lot of uh, uh, technologies and quite a lot of uh, financial and payment platforms that Russia can offer. The same is valid for delivery services and, you know, this, uh, last mile uh, delivery uh, solutions that are offered by um, a lot of Russian um, entrepreneurs and IT entrepreneurs are very interesting. And I know that, uh, for instance, in South Africa, uh, there is uh, some work going on in terms of making sure that uh, people uh, would be using more effective uh, apps in order to have, uh, you know, delivered from uh, the, the shops nearby right to their house and, and this kind of thing. So, um, yes, the, the more of um, economic growth and the more of, uh, um, uh, let's say, the more of um, um, uh, advanced uh, education options uh, are available, uh, the bigger the range of opportunities would be, right? Because when, uh, uh, when, when people are uh, interested in new services, when people are interested in new solutions, uh, that creates really a lot of um, opportunities. And that is uh, also the case of right now, not to mention those, let's say, traditional areas of cooperation between Russia and Africa, which is, you know, some of the high tech um, areas and energy is also an area where a lot can be developed in, in a joint way, right? Uh, uh, not just nuclear plants, but also um, um, hydro energy plants and a lot of other solutions that can provide a stable access to electricity. And electricity is a major game changer for local communities because once you have stable um, electricity supply, uh, you have access to internet, you have access for business opportunities, um, educational opportunities, and so much more. So I think that starting from those very uh, basics and going all the way up uh, to, you know, very advanced and high tech uh, solutions. There is really a lot that can be done. And uh, again, Africa has a lot to offer um, uh, as well, because some of the uh, solutions that were developed in um, Africa um, are, um, you know, very, uh, very advanced uh, and very uh, sustainable in terms of, uh, you know, being uh, applied in many other countries. Again, there is a lot to explore because uh, the, the ties still have to grow stronger. There, there have to be more of direct people-to-people uh, -people exchanges for them to have a better understanding of the countries that are perceived as being exotic. And again, that's valid both, for, you know, Africans uh, looking at Russia and Russians looking at Africa. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Okoli. Uh, we have looked at uh, the uh, Russian-African cooperation, but of course we continue to look at how uh, these, uh, uh, this cooperation can go a long way to solving the problems faced by the African continent. And I will want us to dwell on the role of the African diaspora in helping uh, uh, boost uh, this cooperation by opening uh, uh, greater uh, opportunities, bringing greater opportunities to face leave or solve some of the problems faced by Africa. Uh, some people argue that of course the problems of Africa uh, have been identified but then uh, uh, there is still lack of uh, the uh, practicality uh, in solving this problem we have identified the problems we talk about the problems every time but then uh, uh, we have to move from the sphere of just talking to being practical in solving this problem and bringing or bringing resolve to the uh, challenges faced by the African continent let's look at the, the role of the African African diaspora in uh, the uh, uh, represented in the club in ensuring that practical solutions can be brought to all the problems faced by the African continent, especially in uh, the contemporary society. Thank you so much, you so much for the question. 
in the formation in the formation stage of this uh, club, Africans were involved, and uh, some of what is re required from Africa in terms of development, we have marshaled out. You know, uh, Yulia mentioned the uh, energy. Energy is key to development. Very very important. I'm aware that uh, Russia today is is building a nuclear plant in uh, Egypt. After the commission of the nuclear the, the nuclear plant, it will go a long way to solve the energy problem. When you look at most of the African countries, energy, electricity is a very big problem. In this modern world, without energy, there is nothing you can do. Without electricity, there is little you can do. Electricity is very important. You know, energy is key. So um, we also talked about this in our Russian African club. If the way they could, they could drive investment in terms of energy infrastructure, without basic infrastructure, it's difficult for Africa to develop. If those infrastructures are there, Africa will be able to compete. A uh, situation where energy is not enough, electricity is not enough, it's difficult for production to go on, increase the cost of production. And uh, we are living in a globalized world. You got to compete with people who have 100% electricity and people who have maybe four hours electricity. So getting the African club to push for at least nuclear power plants in some of the African countries to help generate electricity is very, very important. It's very, very key. If they could do it, if they achieve it, that could go along to help African countries. Because there's a lot of businesses that can be generated with improvement of the electricity generation. For example, some sometimes when you go to some African country, you see electricity, you see generators. Most of the businesses are being powered by generators. Increase the cost of production or the cost of doing this. Because you go to buy fuel, you go to buy the generating set, you go to manage it. So it's very, very complex. So in development, in developmental agenda of Africa, energy is key. And uh, Russia is in a good position to solve it because um, if you understand um, Russia, they are very, very, um, very, very professional in terms of uh, nuclear power. Even, I think they are building even nuclear power in Turkey, in Hungary. You know, if we could, they could bring that to Africa, it will go a long way to help Africa because without electricity, it's really difficult to operate. Apart from electricity, there are other infrastructures in which Russia could play a role or to play a part, you know, and uh, uh, with the experience of Russia, when they when it was Soviet Union, uh, most of their technology are very reliable and uh, also less expensive. They are not as costly as uh, uh, what you get in the other climate. In terms of quality, you cannot compare with what the quality of uh, some of the technology you get in China. So, in forming this uh, uh, Russian African club which is meant to give him impetus to, to the development agenda. All this is, is taken in. We as diaspora or diaspora in, in, um, in um, abroad are also pushing, apart from remitting money, you know, to help do one or two things in Africa, we also pushing for this uh, foreign investment, you know, because when, when investment is made, it, it, it generates a lot of opportunities, generates a lot of income, a lot of, a lot of businesses. We see, we live in diaspora, we see how it's done, how things are moving, how things are working. You know, it's difficult for standard of living to be increased in Africa without substantial investment, without, uh, you know, I mean, production. Sometimes you see that Africa is, has become a, a dumping ground for you know a lot of product so it's a problem you know why is it a dumping ground because the cost of production is very high in africa you can't compare somebody who is producing in china and who is producing in africa somebody who is producing in china has 24 has 24 hour electricity apart from 24 hour electricity has a large economy of scale it has so many advantages so any good producer in china compared to the one produced in africa i find that uh, African producers are finding it difficult to compete.
And if you decide to increase tariff to prevent goods from coming in, it causes a lot of problems because, um, as you know, uh, there is the African continental free trade that I have just signed. And that has opened opportunity for so many African countries. I believe if there is investment in key area of infrastructure in Africa, it will help to promote uh, production in Africa. And that's when there will be a gain in that African free trade uh, uh, treaty. If not, it will also serve as a dumping ground for, for goods outside the continent. So diasporans are seeing this in, and are making efforts and are trying to push to see that uh, at least enough investments is driven from abroad to Africa, especially in the key sector where it matters. Energy, road, transport, you know, these are the key sectors, which if a lot of investment is made, it will generate um, uh, economic uh, development. I know uh, Ross Atom is making efforts to build a, a nuclear power in Nigeria. So even the, I mean, uh, brought in some students that are studying in various universities in Russia preparing them uh, for future management of the uh, of the project if it takes off but like uh, a lot of things happening in africa there's always uh, you know politics and uh, lack of will sometime and uh, also leadership problem there are problems there but i hope uh, with diaspora's input um we hope that uh, we get there As uh, uh, the African, uh, the Russian African club, uh, uh, largely uh, from uh, what uh, your analysis and uh, those of uh, Yulia Berger, we can see that the club presents a greater uh, avenue for knowledge sharing that will go a long way to effect a, a change, a positive change across the globe, especially across the African continent. We have just a few minutes to be together. Coming to you, uh, Yulia, for a concluding statement uh, regarding what does the club seek to, uh, seek to, to, to attain, uh, let's say, in the next uh, five years, uh, especially when it comes to uh, sustaining uh, the the, the fatal uh, relationship between uh, Russia and uh, Africa? Well, I think that um, in the current turbulent times, uh, the main goal that the club would, would be setting is to keep this, uh, you know, platform open for uh, constructive dialogue and constructive exchanges, right, uh, based on uh, such deep uh, levels as, you know, cultures and values um, and those other, you know, key drivers, including the uh, uh, economic drivers that uh, clearly are uh, one of the most um, important ones. So, um, uh, at the moment, uh, the, uh, the upcoming goal of the uh, club is to make sure that uh, additional projects and additional uh, joint cooperation um, ideas uh, are supported and that they're building up towards the uh, um, Russia-Africa summit. So that would be a um, reference point in terms of relations between the countries of the African continent and um, Russia. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, the um, work of the club is based um, around uh, the, the key values of sovereignty, of, uh, you know, freedom of choice and of um, mutually beneficial cooperation in various um, areas from culture and arts to education um, and business. You, Mr. Uh, Okolia, before we go, uh, uh, what do you think uh, the uh, uh, the African, uh, the Russian African club, I beg your pardon, uh, what uh, can uh, the uh, African uh, representatives, of course, uh, uh, do to address uh, the, the problems of uh, the African continent so that uh, through this club and, of course, through the, 
the partnership or existing partnership between Moscow and the African continent, it can uh, uh, bring resolve uh, to the challenges facing, especially uh, the economic challenges. Uh, you mentioned uh, the continental free trade area, which is, of course, a great master for the continent Africa that can uh, uh, write or has the potentiality uh, to bring uh, or reshape uh, the economic trajectory of Africa. How can uh, the, the African uh, people or people of African descent use the club, the relationship between Russia and Africa, of course, to fast track this economic development in the present day society? Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, looking at the African Russian club, they are determined to deepen the e economic relationship between African countries and Russia. Uh, let me say that. Uh, the, the club has made effort that in the coming summit that will be coming in summer 2023, it's not only going to be a summit, they are going to be an economic, Af Russia African Economic Forum. That is as a result of the effort of the club. In that forum, they are going to bring African businessmen, Russian businessmen, and international businessmen where they will create you know, a fertile ground for them to interact. And that is a port from uh, uh, Russia African Club. And also, they are going to bring the, whole, the rectors of all African universities to form an association with uh, rectors of, of our African uh, in, universities. You know, in development, education is key. When you educate somebody, you help him to understand the world, you help him to, you know, to build himself. So in that area of education, they are paying very, very good attention. So I see African, uh, Russian African club as a vehicle to push that comprehensive uh, priority of Russian foreign policy to deepen relationship between African continent and Russia. As you are aware, Russia is already in some African countries. They are in Mali, they are in Central African Republic, they are in Zimbabwe, they are in Guinea. You know, they have been there in Guinea and um, there is a partnership, and they, I think that partnership is based on win-win um, policy. Also, the, 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 the nuclear power they are building in Egypt is going to prop up the economy. And I think they are going to extend that nuclear, uh, nuclear energy to a lot of African countries. Because the, the single largest problem facing African countries is energy, lack of electricity. If that is solved, I think it will inspire a huge economic development in Africa. So I see Russia African Club ahead of or the driving uh, at the driving seat to push for this uh, developmental agenda as uh, a pol as a Russian as a, a Russian policy priority towards the African continent. so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Maurice uh, Okulia. Uh, thank you for being part of the program, Views on the Continent, uh, sharing your own uh, uh, opinion uh, regarding uh, the Russia-Africa relationship, of course, bringing the perspectives of uh, the uh, uh, Russian-African uh, club uh, that was uh, launched uh, this year in uh, the month of uh, June. Uh, thank you for accepting or honoring our invitation and thank you for everything mm -hmm. hoping to have you in our subsequent programs to continue to discuss uh, issues uh, concerning the african continent and the global world thank you so much thank you for having me thank you so much Thank you. And of yeah. course, uh, to you, dear Yulia, thank you for accepting the invitation and thank you for the great insight uh, on uh, today's uh, big uh, reiterating that you are a political scientist. Uh, thank you uh, for always uh, being there and for uh, bringing better understanding to the uh, events uh, occurring around or across the global world. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and happy holidays to you, everyone. Thank you. Happy holiday to you. 
And to you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for trusting the Pan-African Television. It is on this note that we're going to draw the curtains into today's edition of our program, Views on the Continent. Not forgetting to say uh, thank you to the technical crew for ensuring that the program was a success. And of course, to keep having a lovely moment in the company of our transmissions. Remember, news is always on the move on uh, Africa Media TV. Bye-bye.